Welcome to Haxby Shed. In this video I'd like to tell you about the drill grinding jig that I made. I have a drill doctor for drills up to half an inch that's 12.7 millimeters but I needed something for my larger drills which range from this 14 millimeter drill up to this 32 millimeter drill which is the largest that I can take in my pillar drill which is an MT4. So briefly to talk about my drill doctor. Uh, this was quite expensive and I have to say I haven't been that successful with it. Drill doctors generally get very good reviews but this was a model I think they only made it for a fairly short time. I've looked for it recently and I can't find it anymore. And the problem that I have with it is I can't get enough rake, enough relief angle on the drill when I cut. So possibly you've seen reviews of these things before. You open these jaws, you set it up according to a process which is fairly straightforward and you rotate this with the drill in place. It operates a cam and grinds the drill. So that's kind of another story. It, I'm having some success with certain sizes but with others I just can't get enough rake on it. Anyway, um, back to the large drill jig story. I did have a particular need for the drill grinding jig because there were three drills that you can see here that I needed to grind. Um, I bought them at various auto jumble sales or from eBay and people had claimed yes I've just ground that drill up it's a great drill but when you actually tried to use it you found it wasn't ground properly so actually the first one I needed to fix was this 14 and then a 24 and then this one uh, is a 1 and 1 30 seconds drill so um, that's what needing to sharpen these was what really uh, kicked me off into building the jig. I'd had a go several times before. I'd never really been very successful, but I decided I needed to crack it this time. So this is the jig mounted on the side of the grinder. I know really I'm not supposed to grind drills on the side face of the wheel because of the risk of the wheel breaking, but I only do that carefully and only occasionally. So I figured out I'd manage that risk. Anyway, the things to point out are that it swivels only this amount and it's governed by this slotted plate here and a peg. So this stops it over rotating. The second thing to point out is when I release this screw, there's a peg here which keeps the drill located correctly, indexed correctly. And I can slide this in or out depending on the size of the drill that I'm grinding. So here's the 24mm drill set up in the jig. You can see this sliding clamp. And this lower clamp provides the stop. And I can turn this to, uh, if I've slackened this one enough, I can turn this to increase the cut. You can see there, there's quite a gap between the drill and the wheel at the moment because I'm just showing you how it works. But you can see that this opposite face to this is against the peg here, which indexes the drill. And it's it doesn't swing further back than this and so that means that it starts the cut already uh, with the correct rake angle or relief angle on the cutting edge so it simply moves this amount that's all the other thing that needs to be adjusted for the size of the drill is the radius of this arc 
it's a bit hard to explain. Um, but the smaller the diameter the drill, the tighter the curve it has to follow as it follows the face of the drill here, the cut face of the drill. I tried to work out what that should be mathematically, couldn't get anywhere at all with it. So in the end I did it uh, by trial and error. And you can see uh, that this base is on a slider. So I just undo this one and this is spring loaded. And I push it forward and when I'm cutting a 14 millimeter drill this face comes up against this piece of wood here and as I'm cutting larger drills you can see I've marked 20, 26 and it moves back a bit but it doesn't have to move back very far and that was one of the things that really surprised me um, I, I imagined that uh, there would have to be more travel when one side has been cut this by then will have moved as far forward as it needs to I put small engineers clamps on to mark the position take the drill out slacken this off take it back set it up move it forward till the face starts to cut the opposite face starts to cut but I don't go further forward than this stop and that way I can be sure that I've cut both faces the same when I'm not using the drill grinding jig I put this section of the cover back on so I can use it like a normal grinder and uh, be protected. So the real question at the end of all this is does it work? Well the answer is it does. You can see the rake angle here cut equally on both sides. You can see the clean faces with a nice bright front edge on both sides and also you can see if I hold it there that this chisel is down at 45 degrees it's not easy to show like this but believe me it's down at about 45 degrees which is the correct uh, configuration for, for the drill and I could show you equally and I will actually the 14 if you bear with me and it's just the same hopefully this will focus it's just the same and it's you know is it perfect no it's not perfect is it pretty good yes it's pretty good and they do cut they cut very well indeed so I will include some still shots of how I built the thing basically I fabricated it as is what I normally do get lots of bits that look like they'll work and just weld them together Thank you for watching Hacksby Shed.